In 2017, my wife and I drove down to South Carolina to witness the total solar eclipse, and I have to say it is one of the coolest celestial events that I've ever witnessed in my whole life. At the time, I thought this was going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but soon after that, I discovered that we would have another total solar eclipse in 2024. Well, here I am nearly seven years later, and I am super pumped that I get to see another total solar eclipse on April 8th. My name is Zach, and I'm the Bite-Sized Engineer. In this video, I'm going to build a solar eclipse data logger. This is going to be a simple project, and I want you to build one so that we can all collect data on this event and share it together. I know I'm kind of nerdy when it comes to space and science and that kind of stuff, but I think it would be really cool for a whole bunch of people to collect data on the solar eclipse so that we can compare. I'm going to need a microcontroller for this project, so I'm going to use the Adafruit ESP32 Reverse TFT Featherboard. The main thing that I want to be able to measure during a solar eclipse is the light level. I want to be able to measure what it is before, during, and after the event. To do this, there are a couple of options. I could just get a simple photoresistor and put it into a voltage divider. Then I could read the analog voltage with an ADC pin on the microcontroller. The other option is to use a sensor like the SparkFun TEMT6000, which is an ambient light sensor. This device is very similar in that it outputs an analog voltage that I'll have to read with the microcontroller. And finally, I think it would be interesting to measure the temperature during the event. The cool thing about the ESP32 featherboard that I'm using is that it has a footprint for a temperature, pressure, and humidity sensor. They just don't populate it to keep costs down. So all I need to do is order that part from DigiKey and populate it myself. With all of those components, I'm able to capture the information that I need during the solar eclipse. But I also need a way to store this data. The ESP32 microcontroller can communicate over Wi-Fi, so it's possible for me to stream this data to a web server or something on my phone, but I don't necessarily want to rely on that in this situation. So what I'm going to do is use an SD card and write all of this data to the card so that I have that as a backup. So to get started, I need to use the photoresistor and make a voltage divider circuit that I can read with the microcontroller. I'm also going to connect up the SparkFun TEMT6000. Once I get that working, I can take the BME280, which is the temperature, pressure, and humidity sensor, and solder that to the board. Here is the circuit diagram for the photoresistor in the voltage divider. You basically put a photoresistor and a regular resistor in series between 3.3 volts and ground. The photoresistor I'm using ranges between 0 ohms and 20,000 ohms. So for the other half of the voltage divider, I decided to use a 1K resistor. If I measure between the two resistors, I'll get a varying output voltage that I can read using the ADC pin on my microcontroller. To build this, I'm going to use a DigiKey solderful breadboard and I'm going to lay out the components like this. I have one pin that's VCC, one pin that's ground, and one pin that's signal. By building the circuit like this, I've matched the pin out of the TEMT6000 so I can interchange these parts. When it came time to connect the light sensor to the microcontroller, I decided to chop the end off of a servo extension cable. These cables are readily available and already had the three pins that I needed. I put a little dab of super glue and I secured the connector in place. I wanted to create an enclosure for this project, so I went ahead and I reused one that I designed last year for a different project. What I like about this design is that it has compliant button caps for each of the buttons. I just needed to add a couple of extra holes in the side for the light sensor as well as the SD card. The other thing I like about this is that it has magnets built into the bottom so that it can attach to any metal surface like a car or a fence or a pole. I can either plug the light sensor directly into the side of the data logger or I can use a servo extension cable to move the light sensor further away. Now it's time to write some Arduino code for the microcontroller. I'm going to start by defining the pins that I'm going to use to read the analog voltages coming in from the light sensor. Then I'll import the library for the BME280 and I'll start looking at an example for that so that I know how to use it and collect data. 
Now that I'm collecting data, I need to write that data to the SD card. The cool thing about the SD card module that I'm using is that it has a real-time clock on it. That means that I can put timestamps on every single measurement, and I don't have to worry about power cycling or not knowing what time it is. In order for the real-time clock to keep track of time, it needs that lithium coin cell battery that you saw me install earlier. The real-time clock library has a built-in function that allows you to adjust and set the time. But most of the examples that I came across use the approach of using the compile time to set the clock. But in my experience, that time was off by 30 or 40 seconds, and that wasn't good enough for me. So what I ended up doing was using an NTP server to set the coordinated universal time. When the data logger boots up, it tries to connect to my Wi-Fi network. If it's successful, it updates the time using the NTP server, and if it can't connect to the network, it just uses the time stored the last time it was able to connect. The ESP32 reverse TFT board has three buttons built in, which is one of the reasons why I really like this board. So I set up three interrupt service routines, one for each button, and then I'll display different information depending on which button was pressed. I'm hard coding the latitude and longitude values for the location that I'll be viewing the eclipse. If you're gonna build this yourself, you'll need to update these values for your location. The code continuously captures data and averages the light values to help smooth out any noise from the ADC. Then once every second, the data is written to the SD card in a comma-separated format. The code will create a new CSV file for every new day. If a file already exists for the day, new data is appended to the existing CSV file. Finally, I wanted to create a little solar eclipse splash screen that appears anytime the data logger is booted up. Now it's time to test the solar eclipse data logger. Now, since I can't recreate a solar eclipse here in my workshop, I did my best to approximate a point source of light, which means I just turned off all the lights except for one of them. To help me test this out, I also need this. Wait, you, you don't know what this is, do you? Hold on a second, maybe this will help. There, that's better. I've got the sun in the sky, I've got the moon in my hand, and I've got the data logger here on my workbench. I'm powering the data logger using a USB cable and the DigiKey power bank. I can create a shadow using the moon, and I'll pass that shadow slowly over the light sensor, and I can see that the value is decreasing quite a bit. Now those values are being written to the SD card right now, and as I continue to pass the shadow over and it passes on the other side, the light value goes up. Now we can pull the SD card out of the data logger and then plug it into the computer to open up that CSV file to see all the data. Okay, I've got the SD card plugged into my laptop and I've opened it up here and I can see that I've got several files here. I've been testing this over the last few days. So there is files for February 2nd, February 3rd, February 4th, and then today is February 5th. So I'm gonna open that one and let's see what it looks like. There it is. Look at all that data. That is so cool. So the first column is latitude, then it's longitude, and then the timestamp in the coordinated universal time, and then the light value, and then of course temperature in degrees Celsius. So this is awesome. I can see that the, the values are all there. Um, now I wanna copy and paste this into a spreadsheet program. I've got my spreadsheet open, and now I can paste it in there. It looks like I need to format this to split the text to columns and I'm going to separate it by a comma. So there we go, I've got all of the data in their own column. So now I can take the light values and graph them with respect to time. This is so exciting. I can see on the graph the times where I had the shadow of the moon in front of the light sensor and the values dip down and then they come back up. It doesn't get any better than this. I don't know what to tell you. If you're planning to go see the solar eclipse this year and you wanna build one of these data loggers, you're in luck. As with all of my projects, the design files for this are open source and will be available for download via GitHub. You can go and download my Arduino code as well as the 3D model for the enclosure. I hope you're as excited as I am to watch the solar eclipse this year. And if you do, make sure that you're wearing ISO certified glasses to keep your eyes safe. That's it for this one. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.